How the cryptocurrency exchange Binance became a haven for hackers, fraudsters, and drug traffickers. In September 2020, a North Korean hacking group known as Lazarus broke into a small Slovakian crypto exchange and stole $5.4 million in virtual currency. It was one of a series of cyber heists carried out by Lazarus that Washington claimed were intended to fund North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Several hours later, the hackers set up at least two dozen anonymous accounts on Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, allowing them to convert the stolen funds and hide the money trail, according to correspondence between Slovakia's national police and Binance. According to account records shared with the police and reported here for the first time, the Lazarus hackers created Binance accounts and traded crypto stolen from Eterbase, the Slovakian exchange, in as little as nine minutes, using only encrypted email addresses as identification. Because of the anonymity of the accounts, Binance had no idea who was moving money through their exchange, said Eterbase co-founder Robert Augst, whose firm has been unable to locate or recover the funds. According to a Reuters investigation, Eterbase's lost funds are part of a torrent of illicit funds that flowed through Binance from 2017 to 2021. Reuters calculated that Binance processed at least $2.35 billion in transactions related to hacks, investment fraud, and illegal drug sales during this time period based on an examination of court records, statements from law enforcement, and blockchain data compiled for the news agency by two blockchain analysis firms. Two experts in the industry reviewed the calculation and agreed on the estimate. Separately, Chainalysis, a crypto researcher hired by U.S. government agencies to track illegal flows, concluded in a 2020 report that Binance received $770 million in criminal funds in 2019 alone, more than any other crypto exchange. Binance CEO Changpeng Zhao accused Chainalysis of bad business etiquette on Twitter. Zhao was not available for an interview with Binance. In response to written questions, Chief Communications Officer Patrick Hillman stated that Binance did not believe Reuters' calculation was correct. He did not respond to requests for Binance's own figures for the cases highlighted in this press. He claimed Binance was putting together the most sophisticated cyber forensics team on the planet in order to further improve our ability to detect illegal crypto activity on our platform. Binance maintained lax money laundering controls on its users until mid-2021, despite concerns raised by senior company officials at least three years earlier. Binance responded to the article by saying that it was helping to drive higher industry standards and that the reporting was wildly outdated. Binance will require new and existing users to submit identification in August 2021. Binance which has approximately 120 million users worldwide, processes crypto trades worth hundreds of billions of dollars each month. In May, the sector experienced a sharp downturn, with its overall value falling by a quarter to $1.3 trillion. Zhao observed newfound resiliency in the market. Meanwhile, his company is expanding its reach into traditional business, announcing this year a $200 million investment in media group Forbes and committing $500 million to Tesla CEO Elon Musk's bid to take over Twitter. Forbes dropped its plans to go public last week, and a spokesperson for the company confirmed that Binance's investment would not take place. Musk did not return requests for comment. According to Reuters, the flow of illicit crypto through Binance accounts for a small portion of the exchange's overall trading volumes. Nonetheless, as policymakers and regulators such as US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde express concern about the illegal use of cryptocurrencies, the trade shows how criminals have turned to the technology to launder dirty money. Reuters interviewed law enforcement officials, researchers, and crime victims in a dozen countries, 
including Europe and the United States, for this press to assess the long-term impact of previous gaps in Binance's anti-money laundering rules. The U.S. Justice Department announced in April that U.S. and German authorities had seized Hydra's servers. The alleged administrator of the servers was indicted by the U.S. for conspiracy to commit money laundering and distribute illegal drugs. Russian authorities shut down the website and arrested the alleged administrator. The cryptocurrency that passed through multiple digital wallets before reaching Binance was included in the data compiled for Reuters. According to the Financial Action Task Force, a global watchdog that sets standards for authorities combating financial crime, such indirect flows with links to known suspicious sources are red flags for money laundering for crypto firms. According to the FATF and the International Monetary Fund, Money launderers frequently use sophisticated techniques to create complex chains of crypto transfers that cover their tracks. The Hydra figure, according to Hillman, is inaccurate and exaggerated, and Reuters is incorrectly including indirect flows in its calculation. Reuters examined evidence from criminal and civil cases. According to a civil case that is still pending in the United States, Binance declined a request from investigators and lawyers acting on behalf of a hacking victim in 2020 to permanently freeze an account that was being used to launder stolen funds. Binance, which disputes the jurisdiction of the U.S. court, confirmed to Reuters that the account was only temporarily frozen. Hillman attributed the incident to law enforcement's failure to submit a timely request via Binance's web portal and then respond to the exchange's follow-up questions. In Germany, police said they began seeing criminals in Europe turn to Binance in 2020 to launder some of the proceeds from investment fraud schemes that cost victims, many of whom were pensioners, 750 million euros, 800 million dollars. The criminal's use of Binance was previously unknown. According to Reuters, North Korea's Lazarus used Binance to launder some of the cryptocurrency stolen from a turbase for the first time. A smaller portion of the funds were laundered concurrently through another major exchange, Wobi, based in the Seychelles, which declined to comment. After another heist in March this year, when Lazarus stole over $600 million from a cryptocurrency-themed online game, Zhao revealed that North Korean hackers had transferred an unspecified amount of the funds to Binance. According to Hillman, Binance has identified and frozen more than $5 million in assets and is assisting law enforcement with their investigation. He didn't go into any further detail. The U.S. sanctioned Lazarus in 2019 for cyber attacks aimed at supporting North Korea's weapons programs, branding it a tool of the country's intelligence service, an accusation Pyongyang dismissed as vicious slander. The North Korean mission to the United Nations did not respond to emails. Chainalysis, a blockchain researcher, estimates that Lazarus stole $1.75 billion in cryptocurrency by 2020 which mostly flowed through unidentified exchanges. The Hydra is strong. Zhao, also known as CZ, founded Binance in 2017 in Shanghai. Three months later, he announced a new strategy for the company's next phase of development on an internal chat group. Do everything and nothing else to increase our market share, Zhao wrote. He stated that the priority was for Binance to overtake larger cryptocurrency exchanges while fending off competition from smaller rivals. Profit, revenue, comfort, and so on are all secondary. Hillman responded, neither CZ nor any other Binance business leader has ever suggested that increasing market share should supersede compliance obligations. Among the countries Zhao sought to expand in was Russia, which Binance described as a major market in a 2018 blog as a result of its hyperactive crypto community. In April, a Reuters article detailed Binance's efforts to dominate the crypto market in Russia, as well as how the exchange was building ties with Russian government agencies behind the scenes. 
Binance has continued to offer limited services in Russia since the country's invasion of Ukraine earlier this year, despite requests from the Ukrainian government for exchanges to ban Russian users as part of efforts to financially isolate Russia. Russia refers to its operations in Ukraine as a special operation. In April, German police, working with US authorities, seized Hydra's servers in Germany, effectively shutting down the website. The US charged Dmitry Pavlov, a Russian resident, with administering the servers. A week later, Russian authorities arrested Pavlov on drug-related charges, according to a Moscow court, adding that he had filed an appeal. Pavlov told the BBC before his arrest that he ran a licensed server company and had no idea it was hosting Hydra. Pavlov did not respond to Reuters messages sent through his company. According to the Justice Department, Hydra is the world's largest and longest-running darknet market, and it has received approximately $5.2 billion in cryptocurrency. The Justice Department did not name Binance or any other payment provider associated with Hydra, and it declined to comment on Binance. According to Hillman, Binance works closely with law enforcement to target the illicit drug trade on a daily basis. Sites like Hydra can only be accessed through a hidden section of the internet known as the dark web, which requires a browser that conceals a user's identity. Hydra users recommended on the site's Russian language forums in March 2018 that buyers use Binance to make purchases, citing the anonymity Binance provided its clients at the time by allowing them to register with only an email address. This is the quickest and cheapest way I've tried, one user commented. On Binance's Russian community Telegram chat in 2021 and early 2022, Cryptocurrency traders exchanged dozens of messages about using Hydra. The Hydra is thriving, one person wrote last year. According to researchers, Hydra transformed Russia's narcotics market. Previously, drug users would pay cash to street dealers. Users chose substances on Hydra, paid the seller in Bitcoin, and received coordinates to pick up the treasure at a discreet location. Buyers, dubbed treasure hunters, discovered their finds buried in forests on the outskirts of town, hidden in garbage dumps, or stuffed behind loose bricks in abandoned buildings. According to a United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime report, Hydra increased drug availability in Russia and fueled a surge in demand for stimulants like methamphetamine and mephdrone. According to data from Russia's State Anti-Drug Committee, drug-related deaths increased by two-thirds between 2018 and 2020. The Drug Enforcement Administration, which supported the investigation at the time of the US and German operation to seize Hydra servers, said the marketplace's services threaten the safety and health of communities far and wide. Reuters was directed to the Justice Department for further comment by the DEA. Alexei Lahov, director of the Russian charity Humanitarian Action, which studies drug use, was horrified by how Hydra fueled addiction. Back when I used drugs, you had to know someone at least to get narcotics, Lahov, a recovering addict, added. Alexandra, a 24-year-old Moscow office manager, began purchasing mephdrone and ketamine on Hydra in 2019 to help her cope with her bipolar disorder. Several friends who used Hydra told Alexandra that Binance was the safest way to pay dealers, she told Reuters under the condition that she only be identified by her first name. She claimed that some of them used false personal information to open Binance accounts, but she uploaded a copy of her passport. Binance never questioned or blocked any of her payments. When asked about her account, Binance stated that it was constantly improving its know-your-customer capabilities. According to Alexandra, the system's anonymity made it simple to buy drugs on the dark net. It was like going to the store to buy chocolate. She went days without sleeping as her drug use became a habit, and she was plagued by hallucinations and depression. 
I felt like I was dying, and I liked it, she explained. She eventually sought psychiatric help and began therapy. She has only used Hydra to purchase cannabis since then. Without mentioning Hydra or Binance, State Department reports from 2019 and 2020 warned that drug traffickers in Russia were using virtual currencies to launder proceeds. A spokesman for the State Department declined to comment on Hydra and Binance. According to an internal document obtained by Reuters during its January investigation, Binance was aware of the risk of illegal finance in Russia. In an assessment reviewed by Reuters, Binance's compliance department assigned Russia extreme risk rating in 2020. It cited U.S. State Department money laundering reports. Binance, according to Hillman, has taken more action against Russian money launderers than any other crypto exchange, citing a ban imposed on three Russian digital currency platforms sanctioned by the U.S. According to Crystal Blockchain data, Crypto flows between Binance and Hydra dropped sharply after the exchange tightened its customer checks in August 2021. Financial Liberty Binance has allowed traders on its platform to buy and sell Monero, a cryptocurrency that provides users with anonymity, for the past five years. While Bitcoin transactions are recorded on a public blockchain, Monero conceals sender and receiver digital addresses. According to Binance's Beginner's Guide to Monero, which is available on its website, such coins are desirable for those seeking true financial confidentiality. Zhao has advocated for privacy coins, the most popular of which is Monero. Zhao stated that privacy was part of people's financial freedom during a 2020 video call with staff, which Reuters reviewed. He did not mention Monero, but he did say that Binance had supported other privacy coin projects. Monero has proven popular among Binance users. According to CoinMarketCap data from late May, Binance was processing Monero trades worth around $50 million per day, far more than other exchanges. Law enforcement agencies in Europe and the United States have warned that the anonymity of a Monero makes it a potentially useful tool for money launderers. In a 2020 report, the U.S. Department of Justice stated that the use of anonymity-enhanced cryptocurrencies such as Monero was a high-risk activity that is indicative of possible criminal conduct. Over 20 users wrote about buying Monero on Binance to buy illegal drugs on several darknet forums reviewed by Reuters. They distributed How to Guide's dubbed DNM Bible, a reference to darknet markets. XMR is essential to anyone buying drugs on the dark web, one Dread Forum user wrote, referring to Monero's ticker symbol. Because it is not possible to contact users via the forum, Reuters was unable to reach these individuals for comment. Hillman told Reuters that there are many legitimate reasons why users require privacy, such as when opposition groups are denied safe access to funds in authoritarian regimes. Binance is against anyone using cryptocurrency to buy or sell illegal drugs, he stated. Binance has been used by hackers to convert stolen funds into Monero. Hackers hijacked an Australian man named Steve Kowalski's cryptocurrency wallet in August 2020 by tricking him into downloading malware, according to Kowalski's witness statement to Australian police. They took out the 1,400 Bitcoin he had in his wallet, which was worth about $16 million at the time. Kowalski told police that he bought the Bitcoin six years ago for $500,000 and that it was a significant portion of his assets. According to testimony and blockchain analysis reports filed as part of an ongoing civil complaint Kowalski filed last year against Binance in Miami-Dade County, Florida, investigators hired by Kowalski traced most of his Bitcoin through a series of wallets to six Binance accounts, where the coins were exchanged for Monero. Kowalski did not respond. 
Kowalski's investigation revealed that the majority of the Binance accounts were controlled by a U.S. software consultant named Brandon Ong, who was living in Florida at the time. Ong testified in court that the Bitcoin was deposited in his Binance accounts by a crypto trading partner he only knew online as MoneyTree. According to Ong, MoneyTree paid him a 1% commission to convert the Bitcoin to Monero on Binance and then transfer it back. Spencer Silverglate, Ong's lawyer, stated that MoneyTree most likely traded through Ong to conceal his identity from Binance. Ong claimed he had no idea he was laundering stolen Bitcoin. Money Tree did not respond to Reuters' email sent to an address provided by Ung to the court. Ung, according to Silverglate, did not steal or launder Kowalski's Bitcoin and was innocent downstream trader. Ung's Monero trading had previously raised concerns at another cryptocurrency exchange based in the United States, Poloniex, where he also had an account. According to a summary filed with the court, his Poloniex account was frozen in mid-2019 after it was flagged for high-risk exposure to money laundering due to Monero withdrawals totaling more than $1 million. Poloniex did not respond to a comment request. Binance handled Ong differently. According to their written communications, Kowalski's private investigators and lawyers contacted Binance shortly after the theft before Ong converted all of the funds, and repeatedly asked Binance to permanently freeze Ong's accounts. The court filed letters also accused Binance of failing to respond to police requests to secure the assets for the duration of the investigation. Binance froze the accounts for seven days before lifting it, allowing Ong to exchange the stolen Bitcoin for Monero over the course of several months. Hillman told Reuters that law enforcement failed to request a permanent freeze through Binance's web portal within the seven-day period and then did not respond to the exchange's follow-up questions. In a message, a Binance investigation team member told one of the private investigators that while the paths leading to this account are highly likely malicious, Binance could not prove the accounts were created to facilitate laundering. When the investigator persisted, a member of the team chastised him for several issues with your tone. Binance stated in a December submission to a Florida court that the case should be dismissed because the court lacked jurisdiction over the company. The judge has granted discovery, a process in which parties request documents from each other, to resolve the matter. Binance investigates all allegations of misconduct on its platform, according to Hillman, and takes appropriate action if its investigators uncover wrongdoing. Eterbase, the Bratislava-based exchange that was hacked by North Koreans, also sought Binance's assistance. Zhao tweeted on September 9, 2020, in response to the Lazarus hack, we'll do what we can to assist. According to communications between the two firms seen by Reuters, when Eterbase emailed Binance's support center, a Binance team member said they could not share any account data without a law enforcement request. Eterbase filed a criminal complaint with the National Crime Agency in Slovakia. The agency wrote to Binance in June 2021, requesting information and claiming that the funds were stolen by anonymous attackers united under the Lazarus Hacking Group. Binance responded that it was unable to identify any accounts linked to the hack. In July, in response to another, more detailed police request, Binance provided the agency with records on 24 accounts, stating that they had been empty for more than nine months because the assets had instantly been traded. Hillman stated that Binance fully cooperated with Slovakian authorities and assisted them in identifying the relevant accounts. According to the records reviewed by Reuters, the only personal information Binance had on the account holders was their email addresses, many of which were misspelt versions of well-known names like Benjamin Franklin, the American founding father, and Gareth Bale, the Welsh soccer player. According to the records, the hackers used virtual private networks to conceal the location of their devices. According to the account records, 
the hackers passed an unspecified security check and were able to withdraw cryptocurrency within about 20 minutes of opening the majority of the accounts. Each account then converted a portion of the stolen funds into just under 2 Bitcoin, the withdrawal limit for a basic account without identification at the time. Following the hack, Eterbase ceased operations and later declared bankruptcy. Eterbase's co-founder, Augst, stated that the losses meant the company could no longer cover its expenses. The hack destroyed our business, he claimed. Victims of the hack have yet to be compensated. The Black Hole Zhao has privately complained that Binance must conduct background checks on its customers. During the 2020 video call, Zhao informed employees that know your customer policies were unfortunately a requirement of Binance's business. The compliance team struggled with its workload at times. In a message to employees in January 2019, Zhao requested that other departments assist the compliance team in conducting background checks due to an overwhelming number of new users. According to a group chat among Binance employees, the compliance team occasionally approved accounts with insufficient documentation. A team member informed colleagues that one user was able to open an account by submitting three copies of the same receipt from an Indian restaurant meal. Binance's Know Your Customer checks are now highly sophisticated, according to Hillman, and such rules are both mandatory and welcome. According to current and former police officials in five countries, criminal groups have been among Binance's growing customer base in recent years. Conrad Alba, a retired family lawyer in Germany, invested the majority of his savings in late 2019 on a trading platform he discovered online. He told Reuters that he hoped it would supplement his small pension and enable his wife to stop working to support their family in a black forest village. The platform, Grangefex, promised to unleash the potential of his money using a sophisticated algorithm. A sales representative told Alba, who had little investing experience, in an email that he could double any deposits in a year. Over the course of 18 months, he wired nearly 35,000 euros to Grangefex's bank accounts. When he asked Grangefex to pay him his expected profits last June, he discovered his money had been transferred to Binance, according to emails and bank account records. Alba begged Grangefex to return his funds via email, telling their finance department he was in mountain of debt and having a nervous breakdown. Grangefex responded, you will simply not receive your money. Reuters emails and phone calls to Grangefex were not returned. Germany's regulator declared the platform unlicensed and ordered its closure in June 2020. According to German, Austrian, and Spanish authorities, Grangefex was one of a string of bogus trading websites set up by organized crime groups that defrauded 750 million euros from European citizens, many of whom were pensioners. According to six people involved in police investigations into the scams, the groups, which operate call centers in Eastern Europe, have shifted to laundering their profits through cryptocurrency exchanges, particularly Binance. Binance, according to Hillman, is combating investment fraud by identifying victims and suspects and freezing criminal proceeds whenever possible. The European Funds Recovery Initiative, a non-profit organization based in Vienna that assists victims of investment fraud, has received approximately 220 complaints from people whose stolen savings were converted into cryptocurrency. Almost two-thirds of the money lost through Binance, totaling 7.4 million euros, according to the initiative's co-founder, Elfie Sixt. According to authorities, Binance was used in other investment frauds targeting people in Turkey, the United Kingdom, and Pakistan. According to police officers and lawyers, it is more difficult for fraud victims to recover lost funds when they use a cryptocurrency exchange. Customers in many countries can request that their banks freeze or reimburse stolen funds. 
According to its website, Binance requires victims to sign non-disclosure agreements as a condition for temporarily freezing assets and requires the direct involvement of law enforcement to process claims. Sixth stated that she had followed this procedure to no avail. I've never been successful in recovering money from Binance. Hillman did not respond directly when asked about this. Alba, the retired lawyer, wrote to Binance but never received a response. The 67-year-old reported the theft of his savings and their transfer to Binance to local police in June 2021. His case is still being investigated, according to the prosecutor's office in the nearby town of Baden-Baden. Binance stated that there was no record of Alba's letter. The state cyber crime unit is investigating a similar scam that used Binance at a police station in the lower Saxony city of Braunschweig. Chief Inspector Mario Kraus, two of his investigators, and the prosecutor in charge of the investigation all spoke to Reuters about the case. Last October, the unit worked with Bulgarian authorities to raid a call center in Sofia, which police said was running hundreds of bogus online trading platforms. They obtained evidence, which Reuters examined, including a database that showed the operators had received deposits totaling 94 million euros. Police seized videos from an employee's phone that depicted a Wolf of Wall Street atmosphere at the call center, according to Kraus. When large deposits were secured, employees rang gongs and popped champagne bottles. Each week, a scoreboard displayed which employee had earned the most money. They partied on private jets and yachts. The prosecutor's office said in a statement at the time of the raid that one suspect had been arrested. According to the case prosecutor, Manuel Richer, the organization's leaders are still at large. Dortome BG, the company that ran the call center, did not respond to requests for comment. Throughout the investigation, the cyber unit attempted to determine where the stolen funds ended up. According to police, the money was traced through many layers of bank accounts to Binance and another exchange, US-based Kraken. The funds had been withdrawn or sent to a mixer, a service that anonymizes crypto transactions by breaking them up and mixing them with other funds, by the time Binance and Kraken provided account records. According to the officers, the personal information held by both exchanges on the accounts was frequently faked or stolen from victims. Kraken told Reuters that it has bank-grade customer checks and robust fraud prevention tools. Kraken denied that the customer information provided to Braunschweig police was fictitious, claiming that every indication we have suggests these accounts were used by legitimate clients. The money trail for the Germans went cold. Kraus stated that his team was having difficulty making progress. We're trying to find a way out of the black hole, he explained.